Good morning, Admiral. Good afternoon, General. Cool weather we're having today. It's warmer than yesterday. They say it may rain. No, uh, here comes the sun. It's coming. So, it's your turn. Pick a subject. I've got one. A good one? In my opinion. All right. What's the subject? Lunch. Lunch? Your subject is lunch? It's my turn, isn't it? I pick lunch. Not much of a subject, in my opinion. No. Does that mean you concede? I concede nothing. I merely stated that it's a poor subject. But I accept the challenge. If it's, if it's lunch, it's lunch. Start. Are you ready? Would I say start if I weren't ready? Start means I'm ready. Go ahead, start. Very well. Appetizers. Appetizers, right. To kick off a good lunch, the best appetizer is herring. Wrong. Wrong? Herring is not the best appetizer? It's good. I didn't say it wasn't good, but it's not as good as caviar. Damn, you're wrong. Caviar is too rich for an appetizer. It's a dish that should be reserved for special occasions, with a little champagne. A snack, yes. An appetizer, never. Are you telling me that fresh caviar, lemon juice, finely chopped eggs, raw onions garnished with parsley and served on lightly salted water thin biscuits is not a good appetizer? Do you want to compare it with herring in white cream sauce, marinated onions, two large black olives sitting on either end of the plate, sprinkled with dill and the end piece of a fresh baked brown bread to soak up the drippings of the herring, the onion and the dill into one final succulent mouthful? Hmm? You argue well. I can see the appetizer. Thank you. Let's move on to the soup. Well, I don't think we'll have any argument there. Borscht. Borscht? For soup, you pick borscht? Out of all the soups in God's creation, you pick an ordinary dish of borscht? Not in a dish, in a bowl. And there's nothing ordinary about piping hot borscht prepared with sweet sugar beets, Ukrainian style, with ham and country sausages, and topped with a thick white sour cream. Are you prepared to challenge a, a soup like that? I would sooner have cabbage soup steaming from the pot with thick chunks of boiled potatoes and globs of tender meat still hanging from the bone. And sooner than cabbage soup, I would take a full-bodied vegetable soup with carrots, with fresh asparagus, with cauliflower stalks and parsnips and ripe tomatoes. And sooner than a vegetable soup, I would take a fish soup with tripe and giblets and young kidneys floating on a top so thick you'd have to push your way into the soup. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not talking about your run-of-the-mill, ordinary, everyday, served-in-a-restaurant borscht. I'm talking about peasant borscht, the kind you eat with a pound of hot cornbread on your left hand and in your right hand a thick, heavy wooden spoon. A wooden spoon? That's different. You didn't mention a wooden spoon before. I concede the soup. Accepted. How do we stand? Well, you won the appetizer, I won the soup. Well, up to here, it's been a very close lunch. Next course. Next course is fish. Fish? Ah, well, we can forget about the fish. I don't care for fish. Whatever you choose for fish is fine with me. You don't like fish? I'm not dead set against it. It's all right once in a great, great while. It's not substantial enough. It never satisfies me. To me, the important part of a meal is the roast. Why don't you pick out a fish and then we can move on to the roast? So you concede the fish? Mention a fish and I'll concede it. Pike. A nice piece of pike. Carp is better. You just conceded the fish. I didn't know you were going to say pike. I don't find pike a tasty fish. A nice pike fried in brown butter with... Stewed tomatoes and a thick mushroom sauce? That's not tasty. It's tasty if you smother it with carp boiled in lemon juice. But you already conceded the fish. All right, I won't make an issue of it. Change it to carp and I'll concede the fish. But carp is your fish. Then I'd be conceding. You could have chosen carp ahead of me. The option was yours. Will you concede if I drop the pike and pick another fish? That's fair enough. What do you change it to? Brook trout broiled with sliced almonds. 
poached salmon with hollandaise sauce. I thought you didn't like fish. Maybe it's only the ones you like that I don't like. You're purposely doing this. You accuse me of being false to my taste? You dishonour me. I dishonour no one. I call for a stalemate on the fish. So soon? Why give up? There are so few fish that I like. Very well. Fillet of sole cooked with white wine and grapes. Sea bass cooked in black bean sauce. Stalemate! Stalemate! Don't get yourself so excited. We still have the roast to get through. Agreed. Stalemate. I don't understand why there should be a stalemate when pike is so delicious. Especially after what we've just had borscht. What's past is past. The table has been cleared. We're on the roast now. It's your turn. I pass. You pass on the roast? I pass my turn. I want you to go first. I don't trust you anymore. Well, it makes no difference to me. For the roast, I contend there is nothing better than boiled beef served with white hot horseradish with giblets, pearl onions, peas, beans, white bread and a cold spring wine. Oh, I can smell it now. I can barely contain my mouth from dripping with saliva. It is, I believe, your turn. Unless you wish to concede the boiled beef. I do not concede to boiled beef. Then mention, if you can, a better roast. A nice piece of pike. Pike is a fish! We're through with the fish course. Not in the case of a stalemate. In a stalemate, you can always go back and try again. When was this decided? Just now, I decided. All right, if you say pike again, I say brook trout again. Double stalemate, next course, boiled beef, your turn. Boiled beef? Herring borscht and boiled beef? It's a meal for a cold, hungry soldier, not a commanding officer and a gentleman. Am I being challenged or not? I could challenge boiled beef with a small partridge. I could challenge it with a brace of quail. I could challenge it with a firm, young roast turkey. Roast turkey? Hmm. You may have something there. I could challenge your boiled beef with a hen. A fat, juicy, white meat, thick-breasted hen. I see what you mean. A hen? Certainly, a hen is always nice. But I'm not going to do it. I challenge boiled beef with... a duck. A duck? I didn't think of a duck. How did I overlook duck? What kind of duck? A duckling. A round, plump, young duckling. One that had a taste of ice during the first frost. And then it's roasted. Pan roasted to a crisp golden brown. The skin so crisp that it crackles in your mouth. I concede to duck. Roasted with potatoes cut small into the dripping pan. I concede, I said. And the potatoes are turned and soaked in duck fat. And in the pan, young onions are beginning to turn to a rich, deep brown, sizzling and frying in butter and fat, while the sweet aroma wafts up your nostrils, driving your taste buds into a state of frenzy. How many times do I have to concede? Are you deaf? You're purposely doing this to get back at me for not liking the pike. I concede to duck, all right? The main course is over with. Now, let's get to the dessert, for God's sakes. And the duck is basking in the juice of a Spanish oranges. Enough already! What's wrong with you? You're acting like a child over a silly piece of pike. Try it sometime. In butter and oil. You won't think it's so silly. Do you want to continue or not? Go ahead. I'm still favouring my duck. For dessert, I choose... Yes? I choose for dessert... Well, out with it. If you can't think of one, I'll choose. Done thinking. I want to end the meal perfectly. I choose for dessert... Cold peaches, sweet cream and brandy. That's mine. I chose peaches, sweet cream and brandy. You can't take my dessert. I can take it if it takes you an hour to think of it. For a meal to be perfect is not only what you eat, it's when it's served. If I waited for you to think of it, I would be hungry again. I refuse to argue with you any more. Then you concede the lunch. Are you through choosing? Certainly I'm through. We've gone through all the courses, haven't we? The lunch is over. I've won a clear victory. 
concede the fact and we can go home. But you are definitely through choosing. As far as you're concerned, the lunch is over. Of course it's over. What in God's name could follow cold peaches, sweet cream and brandy? A cigar. A big, black, panatella cigar, followed by a two-hour nap. I forgot a... I forgot a cigar and a nap. <laughs> you know what kind of a nap you have after a good cigar? Delicious. A delicious nap. It's not a hard-working, tiring sleep like you have at night. A light nap is delicate. You sleep softly, with warm, sweet dreams, the kind you had when you were 30. That's how you end a good, perfect lunch. How could I forget a cigar and a nap? And I'm not even through yet. When you wake up, a mint. A white, tangy peppermint kills the entire sour taste in the mouth. All right, that's enough already. You've won. You don't have to rub my nose in it. And with the mint, the afternoon newspaper. A blanket on your lap, a cosy fire and a dog at your feet to rub your toes on. And as you sit there with your body warm to a perfect temperature... You read only good news in the paper. France is having political trouble. They're starving in Ireland. England is in financial crisis. But here, everything is good. And just as you're about to fall off into the perfect sleep, a letter comes in the mail that the Tsar has awarded you another medal. And then you drop off with a smile on your face. The perfect lunch is over, and you have nothing more to do until that evening when the perfect dinner is served. You want to challenge me for the perfect dinner? I'll let you go first. Hors d'oeuvres. It's my turn to choose the subject, not yours. Oh, I've had enough for today. I'm not feeling well. A little chilly. You don't look so good. A little pale. Maybe you should see a doctor? It's a good idea. Maybe I'll drop in on Dr Vyshinsky. Oh, Vyshinsky. <laughs> that butcher. He knows as much about doctoring as my three-year-old granddaughter. Are you trying to tell me you know a better doctor in Russia today than Vyshinsky? Do you challenge me? I challenge you. But not today. Next week. Next week it is. You're right. It is getting chilly. No, I think it's beginning to warm up. Here comes the sun. It'll rain before you get home. Next Tuesday, then. Next Tuesday. <laughs>